Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at what I think is an interesting pen. It's an interesting pen and I think there's quite a bit to say about it, but it's, it's fascinating. This was sent to me by Notemaker, that's an Australian company. So notemaker.com.au, okay? Notemaker. This is the box, now look at that. I'm holding that so that it reflects the light in the right way because it looks like a black box, but it's not. There's a big ship on there and it's by Gerbin. And it says Gerbin depuis 1670, and I'm not going to, my, my French numbers, um, um, 1600, etc. I'm, I'm not gonna go through that, I, I don't like it. Uh, 1670. Uh, here we have a fancy uh, uh, box. This is stuck to the inside of the lid. Um, and it is the Tempête, yeah, so the Tempest. Uh, neat little book about the, the you know, the, the, the story booklet, story of the brand and, and what you can get and all that. It's, it's decent in English and French. Uh, there is a, a warranty card which you can uh, send in and then you have the pen. I'm just going to show you the, the box. So you have three little bottles of Gerbin ink. This is where the, um, uh, sorry, four, I can't count. Either in French or in English, apparently. Well, now it's actually two, so I guess it kind of kind of makes sense. And um, there is a little eyedropper, and this was a slot for the cap of the pen. I just left it capped. What inks do you get? In this case, you have Rouge Garoubier, which is a sort of understated red. There is Rouge Opera, which is a, a slightly more pinkish uh, red. There is Rouge Bourgogne, which is, I think, even pinker. Uh, and then you have Terre de Feu, which is a, a brown ink, uh, also fairly nicely shaded. You have a, a cute little uh, eyedropper with a very stiff rubber thing to, uh, to press there. And then of course you have the pen. The pen is what we're interested in, <clears throat> so I'm going to spend some time on that. I'll tell you what I, I first show you. The parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. Now, it's actually a relatively large pen. It's, it's not super small, and the reason I say that is, I put it out here somewhere, uh, Gerbin first made a rollerball and then they made a fountain pen, which is, which is very small. It's, it's really a pocket pen. As you can see here, this new Tempet is, is much bigger. Okay, parts of the pen. Finial, nothing. Uh, simple clip, cap, has a center band that says uh, Gerbin, on the other side it says Paris, uh, and then we have the barrel, now you can see this is an eyedropper filled pen, hence the eyedropper supplied, and that ends in a nice little pointy object. Cap screws off, then you have a, a section, a lot of threads to keep the ink in, right? Uh, a little o-ring built in and then a section and a nib. Now I don't know how much of the detail you can see on this nib and we'll make sure there's a high resolution picture of that on the website but it's a pretty cool nib. Uh, it looks to me like a number six and it says Gerbin depuis 1670 so since, 19, since 1670 and it has a big ship on it. The same ship that you see there. So that is on the nib. That is pretty cool. It's, it's a lot of detail. Uh, as I said, it's a larger pen. It's, it's uh, by no means a, a small pen. Of course, it looks a bit like a desk pen, an old-fashioned desk pen with that, that pointy uh, bit. Um, red section, red cap. You can also get them uh, with other uh, um, colors if you prefer that. And I'm, I just held this up to another nib. I'm not sure if this really is a number six. Could be five and a half. It's, it, it looks like it's a little smaller than a Visconti nib, and those are number six of what I have there. So, sorry about that. Um, feed, and that's it. Of course, you unscrew this, you use the eyedropper to uh, uh, put in ink from either of these bottles or something else. This currently has the uh, Emerald de Chivour. Uh, the, the very uh, fancy shimmering uh, 1670 ink in there, but you could put any fountain pen ink you want. Can you post it? If you want to, you can post it. That kind of destroys the nice pointy thing and it becomes really big, but if you want to, you can post it. What do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? Well, first of all, that is a pretty complete set. Four bottles of ink. Now they are small, they're 10 milliliter bottles of ink, but hey, 10 milliliters is better than two. 
um, so you can you can actually fill up your pen a couple of times with this. Um, I have not measured how much ink the barrel holds. I'm I'm sorry, but um, it looks like it's a decent amount. In any case, a lot more than a converter would hold. That that I know for a fact. And there are some things I like it. I mean, it comes with the eye drop, it comes with the ink. I think it's a decent model. It it looks nice. It it it. It has something to it. So I like that. I like the large ink capacity of an eyedropper. Uh, the nib writes. It, it, it performs well. It's, uh, uh, it's not the smoothest nib I've ever used. It's not the scratchiest nib I've ever used. But the nib definitely looks cool. Of course the most important thing is how it writes. Well, it will get the job done. What do I not like so much about the pen? Well, there are some things I found a little dodgy. and. Um, one of them being the, 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 the finish. If you look here, it looks like with that o-ring it doesn't completely fit. The threads were a little rough, um, so that, that made it look a little cheap. Uh, and that clip, uh, it's uh, pretty stiff, but I don't know, it, it looks a bit cheap to me. Now, there are a lot of very inexpensive Indian eyedroppers, for example, by uh, uh, Airmail, Wallaty, th those kinds of brands. Um, and the pen does remind me a little bit of those types of, of pens. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, they, they typically write, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, this, this does not really feel like a super expensive pen. It also has that, that uh, Indian pen smell, and that is not meant in any offensive way, but if you've ever used an Indian pen, you probably know what I mean. But for example, noodleless pens are made there, but also other, other pens like Airmail Wallaty and uh, Sir Wax, they have a very peculiar smell. And this pen has that a bit too. Not as strongly, no, but it definitely has that. So I, I wonder if, if it is sourced in India and they, they put on a special nib or something. Now. What do I like about it? Not like about it exactly. Well, we had started on what I like. I like I like the size, I like the looks, um, I, I, I do think it has some things that feel a bit more cheap on there. Um, but my biggest issue is the price of the set. Uh, this fountain pen that uh, Gerbin made is by no means the greatest fountain pen ever made, but hey, $15. It's not even $20. So this this is a really affordable model. Uh, you can put in a cartridge convert uh, sorry, cartridge you can put in uh, one of those uh, Monteverde mini converters. You can even plug the three little holes with some glue and you can use it as an eyedrop fill pen. $15. 147.56. It's converted from the uh, uh, the, the Australian uh, dollar into a US dollar. Okay, so almost $150 for this and that gives me some room for pause. Uh, I understand you get these uh, 40 milliliters of ink in total with it so that's an ink bottle, a, you know, a decently sized ink bottle if you to put it all together so to speak. Um, so you get four inks, that's nice, you get the eyedropper, you get a nice box but at the end of the day you want to buy a very good pen and at this price uh, that that's, uh, you know, um, add what? $20, $30, and you have a Lamy 2000, uh, which is a piston-filled pen of a completely different class, gold nib, um, you know, and, and then you have this. Um, fun, for sure. Works, for sure. Nice presentation package. This would be very cool to gift someone you want to get into fountain pens, I think. But that's quite a price. And I'm not sure if I really see the value of this pen in that price, or the other way around. Okay, so there you have it. That was the pen. High resolution pictures will be on the website as well as the pen's measurements, sbobrown.com. We're going to do a writing sample. I hope this was useful so far. Thank you to Notemaker for sending this over, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go. This is a new uh, notebook. This is Claire Fontaine, should you wonder. This is the Gerbin Tempête. Tempête. And you see there was a bit of a skip there. The ink is the uh, 1670 Emerald of Chivaux and the nib here. Yeah, what do you make of that? Fine medium.
not the smoothest nib I've ever used, but by no means a bad nib. It, it's a bit of feedback, but it's 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 definitely still quite pleasant. But fast writing. Bit of a skip there again. It seems to hard start a little bit, but apart from that, once it's going, I think it's uh, it's uh, pretty good. Relatively wet writer, line variation, can squeeze them out, but as you can see, that you start to get railroading fairly quickly. So you really have to slow down. Um, reverse writing, possible gives you a nib one grade finer than the other way around, so probably medium and fine, I would say. So it is possible. A thank you to Notemaker for sending the pen over. I really appreciate it. I hope this was useful. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Milcockfield. Today we'll have a look at this. It's the uh, J. Herbin Tem to Temp Tempete Tem Tempete Tempate Tempete. It's the uh, the Tempete.